Time to bring another genre to a close on the Famicom, as Mighty Final Fight is the last beat-em-up. That's another genre whose very first entries were perfect for ports to the system, but the technical demands of beat-em-ups quickly outgrew the Famicom's technology. Depending on how you want to define the genre, you could say that the first beat-em-up on the Famicom was Spartan X, but the belt scroller style that came to dominate really originated with Neketsu Koha Kunio-kun, and Technos Japan would really dominate beat-em-ups for a while. Their Kunio series was the biggest, even extending beat-em-ups into sports, but they also had the Double Dragon series. And of course, plenty of other publishers tried out the genre. The one who might have had the most success was Konami with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The death knell for the beat-em-up on the Famicom was sounded by Capcom's Final Fight, whose enormous sprites and fast action couldn't be replicated on the system. But a port of Final Fight was one of the very earliest Super Famicom games. In 1990, it was one of the selling points for the hot new system. Hey kids, your Famicom can't do this. But the Famicom could do Mighty Final Fight. A years late, scaled down, kind of sort of port, kind of sort of remake. The plot of Mighty Final Fight is the same as the original game. Mayor Hagar's daughter has been kidnapped, and her boyfriend Cody and friend Guy join with him to go take her back. The first thing when you start the game is you have to choose a character. And unlike the Super Famicom Final Fight, all three characters are here. Hagar is the strong wrestler, Guy is the fast martial artist, and Cody's the in-between brawler. There are five stages you'll have to fight your way through in order to rescue Cody's girlfriend, who I'm not sure has a name. For everyone, the controls in the stages are A jumps and B attacks, but everyone has some variation on the attacks. Guy unleashes a combo when you hit B while he's standing on the ground, for example, while Cody and Hagar just take a single punch at a time. Everyone has a jump attack when you hit B while they're in the air, and Cody and Guy have a special downward attack that you get by pressing down and B while they're in the air. If you push up against an enemy, you can grab them, and then B by itself will do a close-up attack, while pushing in a direction and hitting B will throw them in that direction. Hitting A and B simultaneously will do a super attack, Cody and Guy will do a spin kick in the air, while Hagar will do a spinning clothesline. These moves drain a bit of your health when you use them. There are, on very rare occasions, weapons that you can pick up to attack enemies with. Everyone gets their own weapon, and you use them by hitting B. Even if it's a thrown weapon, you can use it over and over again. Eventually, you'll run out, or you'll get knocked over, and then it goes away. Rather than getting score, you get experience points when you defeat an enemy, and the experience you gain depends on which attack defeats them. Jump kicks and knocking them off ledges, for example, gets you the worst experience, while throwing an enemy into them, or doing a super attack, gets the most experience. All of the characters have levels, and as you level up, your attacks do a bit more damage, plus you get one more super attack when you hit level 4. These are activated by tapping B and then pushing in a direction. Cody, for example, gets a long-ranged attack, while Guy gets a new super kick. You're also restored to full health when you level up, so if you can time that, it'd be awfully convenient. At some points on the stages, barrels will roll past, and if you smash them open, you'll find food inside to restore your health. The food is also worth a lot of experience points, so even if you don't need it, it's still worth getting. After the second and fourth stages, there are bonus stages, though these are exactly the same. Waves of barrels come out for you to smash. The number that you smash determines what food you get, but you're already at full health for this anyways. When you reach the boss, you'll actually have a conversation with them, and sometimes they'll ask questions. Answering correctly will cause them damage, and against one of the later bosses can even get you an extra continue. You have five lives in Mighty Final Fight, and then three continues once you run out of those. When you continue, you retain your level, but you go back to zero experience at that. And you have the opportunity to switch characters, so you can carry over your level ups to someone else. Mighty Final Fight has the problem that a lot of beat-em-ups do, where once you identify an optimal strategy, 
there's not much reason to use any other moves. And in this case, I found the best approach was to use Guy, he levels up the fastest, and then use the knee drop to approach people, start a combo on them, and then throw them. It does a ton of damage, and throwing someone is one of the better ways to generate experience. I found Hagar to be too slow to use really effectively, and similarly, Cody was slower than Guy, to the point where I could get more damage out from Guy even if his individual attacks did less. Once you have a technique like that down, it's pretty easy to power your way through the game. You only get to see the end credits if you beat it without using a continue, though. Mighty Final Fight is pretty well regarded in Japan. People seem to consider it to be the best beat-em-up on the Famicom. I don't think I'd go that far. I think it's a little bit easy, and you're really feeling the limitations of the system here. You'll only ever see two enemies at a time, for example. And everyone's move sets are kind of limited. Mighty Final Fight is still a really good beat-em-up, though. It's on the easy side, but that's not the worst thing in the world.